my name is Orla welcome back to my channel in this channel I read short stories for children and adults who are interested in them in this video I'll be reading another great story from girls who slay monsters daring tales of Ireland's forgotten goddesses and these are written by Ellen Ryan Fabulous illustrations by Shona Shirley MacDonald. So get cosy, cuddle down, and we will begin. In this video, I'll be reading the story of the Morrigan. She is the monstrous protector of Ireland. And that's the Morrigan on her one-legged horse with all these scary creatures running around her. You've got a cat with teeth, wolves, everything. Okay. Okay. So Morgan, monstrous protector of Ireland. Morgan, with her billowing scarlet cloak and blood red braids, was neither good nor evil. She danced in the shadows between both worlds. In the outer world's sun-soaked land of Ross, the goddess grew up with her half-sisters, Maka, Baivkaha and Nevin. But from the bowels of the earth, darkness whispered to her like a low, steady drumbeat. She felt it in her feet when playing in the fields and heard it while she slept. Somehow the goddess knew darkness was calling her home. Her mother told her to ignore the sound as it would lead to bad things, but Morgan knew she couldn't resist its call. The goddess liked her family well enough, but she didn't feel like she belonged with them. So one night she ran from the family fortress and followed the drumbeat until it grew louder. Morgan reached a small cave opening, almost hidden by overgrown grass. The cooling air coming out of the cave seemed to kiss her skin and her whole body hummed with excitement. She thought back to her mother's warning, but Morgan knew in her heart this was where she was meant to be. I am the bad thing, she thought. The goddess squeezed herself through the ancient opening and into the dim cave. Immediately, she was caught up in a powerful, swirling gust of air that sucked her deep within. And she fell headlong into total darkness. She could touch nothing see nothing, taste or smell nothing. It was total blackness. She could, but she was surrounded by one piercing noise, the sound of her screams. Her high pitched wailing bounced around the cave and back through her bones, its vibration altering every magical atom in her body and triggering the power of prophecy. Morgan experienced intense visions that transported her to future battles, bloody and brilliant, and even to the end of the world. But now flickers of light cracked through the dark and brought her back to the present. The blackness faded and the goddess realised she was still falling but now she could see a flock of tree-headed copper-coloured birds with flashing green eyes flying by her side. Their beauty took her breath away and she reached out to stroke one. Using its beak the bird pulled her onto its back and flew her tr through the bottom of the cave and out over the land. Together they soared over scorched meadows 
where one-legged horses grazed. But it was all so strange and, and trilling that the goddess laughed with delight. Eventually, Morgan and the tree-headed birds came to land. Out of nowhere, a gaggle of green goblins scuttled over to greet her. Our prayers are answered, they cried. Here is our very own goddess. From behind the goblins, a clutter of fang tooted killer cats appeared. At first, Morgan was alarmed at their menacing appearance, but when they snuggled up against her as though she was the mother they'd never had, she felt a stir in her heart. Mm -hmm. She learned from the goblins that this was a shadowland deep below Ireland. Many monstrous creatures had fled there from the underworld to escape cruel demon masters who used them as foot, foot soldiers in war. But we don't have to worry now, the goblin said. You're here to protect us. No one had ever needed her before and it was a strange feeling to be adored like this. But when every subject of the realm, from half-human wolves to poisonous pigs, came to bow before her, Morgan knew she would learn to lead her subjects well. She now also knew what had drawn her to this place. She was one of them. And now that she could be her true self, the goddess loved to cause havoc. Every Halloween, she and her subjects flew and crawled through the portal cave and up onto Irish soil. Morgan's high-pitched laugh could be heard for miles as she led the charge on a one-legged horse while her monsters trampled vis villages and sent mortals squealing for the hills. People called her a monster in female form, but little did they know that soon she would save them all. In a bid for power, an underworld demon army invaded Ireland and tried to turn it into a hell on earth. Many Irish gods were frightened and didn't know whether to fight or flee back to their outworld homelands. But as a prophet, Morgan already knew, already knew the gods could beat their enemies, though only if she helped. The goddess transformed into a crow and flew through the outer world. I had a vision, she called out to the gods. We will destroy these demons. Kings and queens arise to battle. Yay. Morgan's prophecy gave her people the confidence to march out. The fearsome goddess fought side by side with all of the gods, including her sisters. She single-handedly destroyed legions of demons while her subjects attacked with teeth and claws. Together they drove their enemy into the sea. After that Morgan became known as the unlikely saviour of Ireland. Dagda, the king of the gods, even tried to woo her as his queen. But during this time above ground, someone else had caught her attention. Surprise, surprise, guess who it is? The brave, bloodthirsty demigod, Ku Cullen, him again. He was known for having a violent temper and when angry, his whole body stretched and distorted. His knees twisted to the back of his legs. His eyes bulged out of his head. And he was liable to kill anyone in sight. 
a god as monstrous as this was exactly her type. So one day as Coo Colin was on the road to battle some new enemies, Morgan appeared before him and made an offer. If you be my boyfriend, I'll help you win this war. Coo Colin didn't recognise Morgan and dismissed her saying, I didn't come to battle just to kiss some girl. Morgan admired his rudeness and liked him more than ever now. She had to find a way to make him want her. If you won't be my boyfriend, the goddess said, then in every battle you fight, I'll attack you at the worst possible moment. Cucullin ignored her and continued on his way. Soon, he found his enemies making their way through a nearby stream and at once attacked them. But as he was engaged in bloody combat, Morgan caught up and egged on his enemies. Then she took the form of a slippery eel and tripped him up. The, the demigod jumped back onto his feet and stamped on the eel, cracking her ribs. Next, she attacked him as a snarling she-wolf, but he hurled a rock at her, crushing her eye. Finally, as a white, red-eared heifer, she drove a stampede against him, but he threw another stone that snapped her leg. With each attack, Coo grew angrier and fiercer in battle. So, in her strange way, the goddess helped him beat his enemies. She was very annoying. And years later, when Morrigan had a prophecy that he would die in a duel, she smashed his chariot to pieces so he couldn't leave home. And without him knowing, saved his life. But the demigod never understood how Morrigan's mind worked and always saw her as an enemy. And even though she helped them in war, most Irish mortals didn't understand Morrigan either. They feared her strange creatures and Halloween havoc. But they knew that when the end of the world came, she would be there for them to protect the darkest corners of Ireland. Yay! That was the story of the Morrigan from Girls Who Slay Monsters. Till the next one. Bye-bye.